being a boy in the 80s meant spending your money on amusements, mambo and marijuana. Not for Nick Halleck though, he grew up in the burbs and by the age of 17 had saved $30,000 from teaching guitar. He clearly knew how to charge. He made a career from his love of music, but more importantly, he wisely invested his earnings. Thanks to his skill at both, he never needs to work again and is free to pursue his major passion, thrill-seeking adventures. Good morning, Nick. Morning, Nick. How are you? Good morning. When did you sit back and go, hey, I've got enough money to do whatever the heck I want to do? That's really interesting. Um, see, I, I, I invested very, very wisely. I was, I was involved in the music industry. And uh, investing very wisely, I had a lot of uh, investing you a lot didn't of properties. Invest in the music business, did you? Well, I mean, the music industry was a great time, a great experience to like, you know, to, to be entertaining and be on be on stage and record. But um, you know, money, I guess, I invested in property in the stock market, or what have you, and um, got to the point where I was earning more out of my investments than um, what I was earning out of the music industry. And it was, it's it's kind of rare because most of the musicians seem to blow all their dough. I know, and get up in the um, afternoon, go to sound check, and um, oh my god, I can't believe it. Where's that? <laughs> that's you on the right, is it? That's me there with the uh, the open chest, the bitch. <laughs> nice hair. <laughs> nice. Whoa, no way. It, I was interested to read about you that you never you never buy anything that depreciates. Yeah, I've always had a rule: anything that moves is a liability. Anything that moves is a liability. Unless it's one of those like Picasso art pieces or something, but realistically, I mean, you know, it's got to be bolted to the ground in order to, to um, for it to so appreciate. You, mean, you, you won't buy cars, you won't buy horses, you won't buy cattle, things like no, that. No, absolutely not. I mean, a car if it gets given to me, fine. But until then, <laughs> hey, I'll have a personal driver or something. But so, um, so, so you don't have a, you know, I don't have a car, no. Yeah, I drive. I, I do have a, No, you know what? I was I was being interviewed by our producer in London just recently. I was like, oh, already going. You're a Maserati. You're an Aston Martin. And I go, no. It's like, so I had to get around. I go, I just cab it if I need to, you know. But um, I'm just you know, like stock my stock market for cash flow. Uh, the property for capital growth, and also invest like internet businesses too, and um, other businesses too. So I'm, I'm very business minded too. As well, you know what I find extraordinary about you in reading the notes that you don't classify yourself as a risk taker financially, and yet, yeah, really, your great passion is throwing yourself off a cliff or you know, <laughs> like flying to the moon with the like, Russians. Yeah, <laughs> that's well, a risky adventure. <laughs> but uh, I mean, it's all about calculated risk too. And the thing is, uh, I would rather like a mosaic of different experiences, like, um, you know, like a kaleidoscope of different chapters in my life. I mean, because I want to reflect back in my life and I want to respect myself in regards to like, just, you know, pushing the envelope. This is one it heck of a mosaic that well, we're looking at it, now. It, it, yeah. is, this is the MIG, is I it? I flew to the um, edge of space and I actually yeah, I'm enrolled in the uh, Russian Orbital Space Program in 2003, at which I am still um, training there to become a, um, a fully qualified um, astronaut, or the Russians want to call you a cosmonaut, I guess. Well, what, what, so what... what where will that take you? I mean, basically, uh, my next goal is the um, is basically five hundred thousand feet, and then my, the next goal for there would be the ISS, the International Space Station, and obviously the other uh, climax will be the um, going lunar in the next ten years. But how? how <laughs> I know, it's, that's, it's great, that's the it? pinnacle of life. I mean, going to the moon and blocking out the earth with your farm, how cool is that? How yeah. feasible that's is that for a, for a public individual like yourself, though? Can it really be achieved? Well, there is no such thing as um, the sky's the limit because anything is possible. I mean, I wrote a screenplay to my life. All I'm doing now is I'm just acting it out. Right. Yeah. Right. But, but you didn't come from money. I mean, it's not like no, you were brought no. up in a wealthy family. I'm the youngest of four siblings. By the time I was born, the money, the money ran out. <laughs> so I think I, I, um, I was very independent. Um, but I was very fisc very um, like disciplined in regards to fiscal wise, like money and all what have you. Yeah. But I always knew what I wanted. You know, yeah. it's like and that belief system was very, very, very strong. And um, you know, it's principles and, and a very solid foundation. Would Would you say that your passion has become your business? And I see this now because it, uh, is I that wise? Yeah, well, absolutely. Working, I mean, it's, whatever puts a smile on your face, I think just go for that. That is the most pivotal thing in life. See, it's, it's doing something by choice as opposed to doing something by necessity. Right, yeah, yeah. Wait, mm, but see, see, I'm, I'm just worried that, that your risky adventures are getting riskier. I mean, you've climbed um, and you're, I can't And the next one, I was trying to beat the, the previous one. Well, that's right. And then, you know, really, you've only got a few ahead of that. So you've yeah. got Everest and... and um, what else is ahead of... Well, you want to hear about the North Pole, that's the latest one. Oh, that's right. Now, this I, is yeah. fascinating. No one has done this before. Well, no one's been, been done it. Either. The Russians are actually doing some um, scientific studies right now. What we're looking at doing is this. I mean, you know about the North Pole, it's like it's just a yes. floating bed of ice, about five metres thick. See, most individuals have, like, you know, have gone to the North Pole, they have actually been to the sy synthetic North Pole, that is basically on the, um, on the ice bed, and that drifts about 20 kilometres all the way. But no one's actually drilled a hole through the ice and actually gone down to the bottom of the seabed where the real 90 degrees north is. That's uh, North Pole. Yeah, so... And, and that's 15,000 feet. And because I've done a Titanic, 
the Titanic lies at about 14,000 feet. And we're going to use, utilize the same submersible that I used for the Titanic expedition to do the other North Pole. And do, do you fund this? See, and well, I believe you. I'm part of a, <laughs> a, a, a group of individuals now, and we're, we're actually going to pursue this quite seriously. What would that cost, an expedition like that? In probably five years' time, if it became a commercial venture, probably about $100,000 a ticket. Wow. Yeah. Wow. What are you worth? <laughs> what am I worth? <laughs> That's quite a question. I think my, my value is, I guess, how many chapters my life has written. That's basically how I view it. It's yeah. Nicely avoided. Nicely avoided. This, yeah. the, the, the <laughs> cash flow on ice tour, let's talk yeah. about that. Mm. You, you, you want to take kids with you, don't you? Well, I think teenagers, right? They're our next generation, right? Sure. We're looking for leaders in this country, right? So what we're doing is this. We want to find 50 amazing teenagers in this country who have already shown leadership qualities and they're very, very empowered. And basically what, what I want to do is this. I want to provide physical education with them. You know, take them on the ice, you know, leadership empowerment skills, how to become a better leader, you know, raise the ante, raise the bar, and then have them go back into society and be like a beacon of life or like other teenagers. So you say, so g- give, them, give them fiscal skills. Mm. Fiscal skills. Like, just like, you know, discipline, like, you know, regarding investment, you know, how to become an entrepreneur, how to become a business leader, what have you. Do you think that, that we're educating that out of our children at school? We're edu- educating them out of creativity? Personally, I think the educational system in Australia is obsolete. Yeah, that's just my perspective on it because mm. it just—it really just teaches you how to get a job. Yes, exactly. You know, and effectively, you're being reliant on somebody else but yourself. I think the most qualified person is ourselves, but we don't invest enough time in ourselves. And there are far too many, um, I will say, very um, irrelevant subjects at school. And uh, I think we just need to learn better monetary skills, better fiscal discipline. And um, we need to like just you know have, be very goal. You know we need we need ambitions and yeah. we need to be held accountable to our goals. Mm. Most importantly. Well, so th- this cash flow and I, so you, you yeah. want to take fifty teenagers. Well, why do you want well, to? Well, take- we take we already take clients right now. Like and, and most of our clients, would you believe it, are baby boomers. Is that and that's really interesting. When you look at the demographics now, these are baby boomers wanting to restore the, the financial balance back in their lives. Now, what if you talk teenagers? Now, by 21, do you think they'll be very, very um, independent and financially independent in their later 20s, perhaps? See, Can that's the imagine? best time to like embrace and take on new strategies, you know, harness new energies and you know, opportunities and what have you. We're, we're talking about these baby boomers. What mistakes do you find collectively? Because they were made? never taught the by basics. anybody. I mean, all they were taught was this, like, they'll, they'll probably go to school, get a degree to learn how to get a better job. Mm. And effectively, guess what? Irrespective of whether you earn, like, $30,000 or $400,000, it means nothing. How did you learn all this? See, I'm very self-taught. Do I make mistakes? Absolutely. You know, but if I, if I can assist somebody how to fine-tune it and expedite the process, absolutely. But, I mean, when I was learning this particular procedure, I mean, there was nobody actually, like, took me down and actually walked me through the process. I had to go out there and research it and research it, you know, but I never gave up. I cut every sign of a tree and I just gave myself permission to succeed. But most importantly, I had a very, very strong belief system and I knew, I knew what I wanted. Yeah. And I just, I just wanted, I would not stop until I got it. Why, why do you want to take these, uh, this group to the ice, though? Well, How does, I mean, uh, th- that obviously enhances the experience. Absolutely, but, but a different environment altogether. And like most Australians, they go on holidays, right? Mm. You start to like do a stock take in your life. You have got time to think. True. True. Imagine if you took somebody to like um, the most exotic um, location in the world, like Antarctica, and it's you know with the whole thing with the inconvenient truth and our goal, it's you know we've all raised a level mm. of awareness to Antarctica, but taken to a whole new environment, you know, and having them experience a paradigm shift, like a change mm. of thought patterns. Mm. You know, the way they reflect upon themselves. And basically their true identity will be revealed to them. Does risk-taking help people do that, do you think? I think all it means is just, um, look, I, it's calculated risk. Mm. But um, unless you challenge yourself, I mean, nothing's going to change. It's, it's the law of diminishing intent, doing mm. the same thing over and over again, expecting a different outcome. Mm. But you need to challenge yourself. I'm wondering, I mean, everything, you seem to have your life so together in so many ways, and, and yet you don't have a partner in your life. What's wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> I'm not married. <laughs> you know, I look forward to the uh, the joys of fatherhood at a later stage yeah. in my life. But at this stage, um, I'm not focused in regards to the other uh, marriage aspect right now. So, are yeah. you always are you always uh, checking yourself? I mean, uh, it's interesting. I'm thinking every day. You you, you take people to uh, extreme locations, uh, which which. You, Travellers realise this, don't they? Absolutely. It's, it's, it's an opportunity for a personal stock take. Is, is that constantly going on in your in Absolutely, your every day. I mean, it's like, you know, I want to go to bed and I want to, I want to have braced like new, new distinctions every day of my life. 
you know, because in life, in life you either progress or by law you regress. And if you're absolutely idle, you're, re you're regressing, yeah, aren't you? Yeah. So I think it's just, I'm looking for new colours. I'm, I'm thinking of new adventures, like new business ideas and what have you. Mm. But um, I just want more people to like embrace this. And I, I want to I assist people. I want to nurture them in regards to like finding their, their real identity and what their cause is in life. I mean, we're all here for a specific reason. And we are the result of every decision that we make. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, if you would like to be one of those lucky teenagers, you need to. Yeah. Uh, I think we had the address on the screen yeah. before. But Cash well, we've got the, mm. um, the boys for teenagers too, and for like baby boomers who want to be educated. Absolutely. Yes. Um, we've got cashflownice.com. Fantastic. I'll come on your next one. It just won't be in a Russian mega. <laughs> 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 uh, Nick, lovely to meet you. Lovely to meet you. Thanks. Appreciate it.